What's up, my man? Big Mike Torali. On the road. On the road. Calling in from Wisconsin. Beautiful, beautiful day here, brother. Is it? Oh, yeah. It's been Not gorgeous. Sna- 60s oh, man. and 70s. I mean, it's been like... Oof. Stellar. Parley. Yeah, that's that's not here. No, is it a little hotter down there? It's a, it's a little warmer. Although about ninety today, just suffocating humidity. However, it's supposed to be a lot of rain coming through in the next three or four days, and I think we're going next week. We're starting to look at highs only in like the low eighties, which is like frigid temps. Then come June and July. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, how was your day? Uh, it was busy. I'm out uh, doing some corporate video work, and uh, by the way, I am for hire. In case anybody out there <laughs> has a business or runs uh, some kind of uh, foundation or has a club or a group or anybody looking for video work, MikeTorali.com. Check me out, and then just get a hold of me, CrushingIron at Gmail.com. That is a personal plug of the day. Hey, well, speaking of personal plugs. Uh, I've been, I've gotten awesome feedback on the new video analysis software that, uh, we're going to launch here full time, uh, after the next few weeks. Um, I did a little teaser, uh, of it in the closed group. Uh huh. Um, and dude, it's, it's transformative. Wow. Uh, it is like really transformative. I've been working all day trying to, uh, <clears throat> kind of get accustomed to the the software and the in the analysis part and basically what it is 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 you can in wisconsin you can go to the pool uh shoot video from your gopro or from like you know your waterproof cell phone case uh literally just text it to me uh i can get it i'll upload it to this coach's eye platform and i can instantaneously uh put it in slow-mo uh wide frame and break it down with angles and at the same time give you voiceover and pause it wow uh correcting your stroke underwater and then simply text it back to you that is man it's with almost the, you everything. don't need a you don't need a wireless connection either <clears throat> uh you just you just get get straight to your text message and uh dude it's gonna be awesome i'm just now like barely uh like tip of the iceberg getting into all the great things we can do with it for from underwater swim analysis to run form uh cycling um with people's fits i mean there's just so many things that the sky's the limit and to be able to do it remotely just from your uh you know from your handheld ipad or iphone and send it to me i can send it right back via that is just it's awesome so i'm, I'm super pumped i'm messing with that today uh and posted posted something in the closed group uh it's pretty cool Wow. Oh, there you go. Problem solved for everyone. You're welcome. <laughs> now, I assume that's uh, you're working on, I mean, that's is that something you're just doing for the heck of it, or are you going to be, is there going to be something? No, kind of- no, this is going to be, I've got a few beta testers. I got I got room for a couple more, um, and what I'm going to do with it is obviously offer it to my athletes a few times a month, but then I think what I'm going to do is just ultimately, I'll obviously offer it to the general public. Uh, but there's two things we're going to be able to do with it. It's one, we can, we're going to create like our own, like, uh, C26, what they call locker room. And then I can just independently share videos to everybody in the group at once or individually. Uh, you know, cause a lot of times, and you've been with me before when we, when we touched on open water swimming is that I really like to engage everyone, uh, to credit, not criticize, but analyze a person's stroke. You know, and so if you if we're out in the open water, <clears throat> if you're coming to camp, you'll we'll go through this. Is is you'll swim, you know, maybe ten or fifteen yards to me, and then before I actually say anything, after we kind of get rolling, is I'll ask the the everybody else that's participating, tell me what you saw, mm-hmm. um, because I I found that that critical feedback and getting them to critically think helps people learn, uh, and then also they can visualize themselves as a all right, well. Jim, you swim like that. Do you see the difference? And so we'll be able to do things like that. There's a ton of neat stuff. Um, just kind of touching, uh, touching on like the the outer uh, banks of it. But we'll launch some more stuff full time in August once I get things just rolling and cracking. Yeah, and and yeah, I think this is kind of a great example of the things that we want to keep doing and keep uh, improvising and creating new uh, solutions for athletes. And I think that. 
um, with the Patreon page, we've uh, that's sort of what the mission behind starting that is, and a lot of people asked us to start it, and we really appreciate the early support um, through patreon.com slash crushing iron, and it's really helped us and motivated us, and I'm, I'm glad you pulled that out because there's that's just the beginning, you know, the, oh, yeah. of the things that we'd like to keep doing, and you know, frankly, it just keeps, uh, it takes a little money to, and you know, because we're slowly weaning away from the full-time efforts of other things to focus on this. So, uh, you know, couple, like we keep saying, a couple bucks a month, uh, two or three bucks a month. It goes a, a long way. It goes a long way, you know. Yeah. It's yeah, sort of like give did. up that one, uh, give up that give biscuit. The, give, the, give up the biscuit or give up a Starbucks. Yeah, just one a month. month. So, you know, that's kind of what it is. And we're just, you know, we've we've been having record days on the podcast and we think that it's uh hitting the, you know, hitting some cool nerves with people and we want to keep doing it and we will. <laughs> but, you know, it's got to be real. That's it, man. And we had a great uh a great little Facebook live session on the closed group today. I got one of those as well. You know, now Hayden's back in daycare part-time this month and then full-time July. Uh so I knocked out a nice 45-minute Q&A, uh, Facebook Live, and the closed group, um, and rocked and roll it, man. So it was all things C26 day, just like I like it. Connecting with people, finding solutions, and uh, doing what I love. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. All right, man, let's uh, let's get into some of these uh, questions we've been getting from people. And, Sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, let's... Uh, Let's talk a little uh, getting better at triathlon. Well, I think we, you know, we discussed in the last episode. We definitely covered the escape from Alcatraz and then the Ironman Coeur Lane. And then so this is something that somebody else brought up. Kind of, actually, a few of these were um, were kind of hinted to in our Facebook Live session. And I th- we can always go deeper because you know time is limited with those. But <clears throat> in terms of the in terms of the pedal stroke, you know, is it just going in the motion? Um, and you know, and while it, while the easy answer is, well, kind of, yeah. Um, the more complicated answer is not really. Um, and if you, if you've ever done a single leg drill of any kind, whether it's a low gear, high gear, easy tension, hard tension, unless you're a very higher level accomplished seasoned cyclist, you will find that you have dead spots. Whether it's at 12 o'clock, whether it's at like 7 or 8 o'clock on the backstroke, you're going to find where you have dead spots. And those dead spots might not seem like a lot, but when you accumulate those over to every single revolution for 112 miles or seven or 56 miles, that's a lot. You know, because it's not like you're not uh, pushing the power. It's not like you're trying to apply the force. You're just not getting the the return on investment. <clears throat> and so somebody today also alluded to, you know, what's a good way to not just perfect a pedal stroke, but become a little more, get your legs moving faster. And and you know the, you know this from your time training with me is that I, I do prescribe a lot of these high RPM drills uh, with little to no tension on the trainer. And, and while you might think that that's easy and pointless. Um, actually the least, the less tension you have on the trainer and the, in the, in the easier gear, the harder it is to maintain that actual crisp pedal stroke, um, because yeah. you don't have that tension and resistance. Um, it's like running you know, downhill, man. Exactly. It's like running downhill, <clears throat> you know? And so, um, you know, I, I would say it's like a lot like running on the treadmill. Like you, you place it forward, but then you don't have the, you don't have the resistance, you know, to keep pushing. It actually just kind of pulls you back. Um, but you know, it's a great way to get fast legs to find out where these dead spots are. You know, I always, you know, an easier way is at, when, at the 12 o'clock position, tell your body to push, you know, really slam it down. And when you hit the six o'clock position, really tell your body to pull. And if you do these single leg drills or you just do like a singular focus on one side, you will really find that like you will, you will weaken and fatigue a lot. And then with like any other kind of weightlifting, if you do single arm or single leg versus uh, doing it at the same time, you're ultimately going to find that one is stronger than the other. And so the point is, and there are even power meters now. I think Pioneer uh, is actually one who I think, and maybe even um, are they break it out or, separately or, or Garmin. Yeah, they, they'll tell you what. Like one of them was 52 percent, one of them was 48 percent. 
you know, and so, you know, that, that leads to a lot of things. You're not obviously getting a lot of power out of one side, you're getting more out of the other. Then also stuff like that, what that can lead to is, is sometimes these chronic over fatigued injuries to where one side is imbalanced and you tend to tilt to one side, which is a lot of people will see this. You know, a lot of people will see this unknowingly in their saddle when they, after, you know, a whole season or a second season on a saddle, they'll look at it and the saddle's crooked. You know, like it's like slanted towards the left or slanted towards the right. You see a lot of it with these two prong saddles like ISM Adamo saddles or even some of the newer Cobb or Specialized saddles that have these two prongs in the front to release, uh, you know, pressure. But you'll see that where like your your hips just tend to float one way or the other and that's that the hardest, the most, um, you know, the easiest thing to do is you're just going to be more dominant on one side. And it's, it's common. We're all dominant on one side or you wouldn't be dominant you know you just be all things equal so um there are a lot of things you do, you can do to even on a concert in that pedal stroke you know it's it's never too late to do it you know however off you know quote unquote off season base training you know not in the midst of your your big build or your peak race specific uh training cycle you know you want to focus on these specific skills you know, in the off season and refine them and that then just apply them as the year gets bigger. But it's definitely, it's definitely a lot more than just going around and around and around and around. Yeah. When you, uh, the, I, I'm a huge fan of the single leg drill, even in, um, I think that you kind of used to, I feel like you, maybe, maybe you backed it off, but I feel like it was almost in, in a lot of my workouts throughout the year, just in the beginning, like the warm up, And, and for me, it was like, uh, mentally getting that in your head too, because I love the idea of uh, doing your right leg and then doing your left leg and then coming back with both just to mm-hmm. feel how that feels. And I think that's so crucial because once you can feel your dead spots and then you understand how you're uh, pushing through with each of the leg, but to, to work them together right after that and kind of keep rotating that left, right, both left right both left right and i like to do that a lot actually i was riding um last year i guess i haven't been doing it as much this year but um i would do single leg strokes for a whole almost the whole length of that lab you know it'd be like almost a two minutes worth or a little bit more and then do the other leg all the way back and then do a couple legs uh, a couple you know kind of easy like you're saying with a easier a little bit higher cadence and just trying to really feel how that stroke is, you know, and try to get it real solid and, and consistent all the way around and just mentally in, uh, insert that in my brain. So, and the other thing I like to do, and as you know, I don't have power and or anything really other than a bike. And uh, it's just one of the things I used to do is like, because I would have to count rotations uh, just to see, kind of get a ballpark of where I was at. If, if I had, a, you know, like a high cadence uh, session or whatever. I would count the strokes, like one, t- one, two, three, four, all the way around. I would just count one leg. But I would always start with my left leg because it was weak. So I would always be thinking about that was my dominant leg. So I was trying to always in my head think through, like, lead with your left, lead with your left, and hopefully build that way to kind of make it, you know what I mean, sort of mentally shift into the more dominant leg. But in, mm-hmm. in essence, bring it up to being equal just to kind of get them to be on the same page because obviously that's the key to everything in triathlon is to get total balance, (coughs) you know, perfect balance in both sides. At least that's how I look at that. So No, it's it's a great way to get things firing. Um, That's how I can look at, you know, wake up the left, wake up the right, put them together, do it again. You know, just waking up those muscles and getting those fibers engaged equally. That way their attention, you have their attention. Uh, and now it's time and you're ready to use them. So yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I will, I'll do like 45 seconds left, 45 seconds, right. You know, a minute, a minute and a half, both, you know, and just do that a couple of times. Sometimes I might do two rounds. Sometimes I might do three rounds. And a lot of times it's just like, Oh, Oh, I got it. Like, you know, I feel awake. Like I feel like I'm ready to rock. So, um, you know, so that's, uh, that's another, another good, good way to do it. It's an incredible um, warm up exercise. Actually, it is. I it's a great. It's a great warm. It gets you gets you burning, gets you sweating. Gets you burning, gets you sweating, and it gets, gets you, you kind of thinking about the stroke, and, and and keeping it conscious throughout the ride rather than doing like you said. There's one other thing I like to think about in pedal stroke, and I don't know if you can articulate this because I sure can't. But um, I've done a lot of reading, and I think I do this a little bit naturally. I think it's basically from my mountain bike history, but um, 
where there's there's something to be said about using your body weight. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. and, and there's in I guess if you think about it in terms of standing up out of your saddle and kind of when you you literally can lean down on that pedal. I mean, there, you can't take away from how important using body weight would be in that situation. So, but to do that while you're sitting is a very intricate and kind of subtle thing. And I don't know if you think about that or have heard people talking about that, but there's something to be said for this, uh, uh, the mentality of the concept of spinning, you know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. and in using all of your leverage rather than just trying to pump your legs, or not pump, but like just like do squats or lunges, you know, the whole time you're, you're riding your bike. But getting that system of spin down, and and part of that has to do with a little bit of a dance on the saddle. Not yep. you know you know what I mean. But when I say that, I I don't want to you know suggest that people move back and forth. But it's just a real subtle thing that I think that probably the best cyclists just do naturally. Or you know, I mean, it's just taking advantage of everything you have. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's tough, Jim. And they they want you to be dancing, they want it to be a flow, but they don't want you rocking. You know, they don't want you, they don't, you know, a lot of times they'll tell you that they want you fluid and they want you smooth and you should pretend like you're balancing a textbook on top of your head. You know, like you don't want your heads waving, you know, left to right and getting your body all out of whack and pulling you, pulling you over. But yeah, it definitely should be. And they say all the time, if you watch Tour de France, like so-and-so is, um, you know, dancing on their pedals. You know, it's usually, you know, Contador or somebody crazy, like going up a mountain and they just look like fluid, like they're. You know, if you're if you're climbing well and, and you end up do getting out of saddle, like you should look like you and your bike are one, not like you know one versus the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I think you never want to make that kind of feeling happen. Yeah. For that. Um, uh, do you want to go down this straight down this list here? Yeah, we can knock out. <clears throat> we can knock out a couple. I think uh, the next one was what about uh, bouncing back from from injury? M- yeah, mentally and physically, and then. Responding to the haters, I think you talked about this on your uh, live. Yeah, I did a. Live. Yeah, I did a, a, a on one of the live casts, and then a, a video we posted on the again on the Crushing Iron uh, Facebook close, close group, and then on my personal page as well. But join you know, that th- close group. Join that closed group, or keep missing out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that. You know, not so much the it's not so much the haters. I don't think there are that many people out there. I mean, I think the people that that get down on you when you have uh, any kind of an injury or a setback or whatever, they're not really hating on you. They're asking you to join them. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and and what I mean by that is they the want couch. You to, exactly they want you to join them in misery. Uh, you know, misery loves company, and so do unmotivated, um, undriven. Uh, lazy sacks with no vision. Uh, they are going to kick you when you're down. They're going to tell you you should quit because, frankly, it probably sickens them and makes them feel worse to see you, A, succeed, B, be driven, C, be so motivated, and even worse, D, when something does happen, you don't quit. Um, people actually, I found, really hate that. I can speak from personal experience. Um you know that there was there's nothing more that some people like um, than to watch other people you know be dragged down and not succeed. Um, and you know this is going to be a little you know strong and we'll throw in the throw in the e for explicit. But you know one of my favorite Charles Bukowski quotes is, um, you know there's really it's something like this like there's nothing greater than to show somebody else that you're having a great fucking life. Um, and excuse the f bomb, but but it's true. <clears throat> and, and, explicit. <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. Or we can right. we can beep it out, but it's true. You know, and I and I just found that that those people aren't really hating on you; they're asking you to join them, and don't do it. You know, it, it, I don't even think it'll be tempting to most people if you're even in the sport. But but the people who who doubt you, the people who um you know, think that you shouldn't do something or that you're, you've gone down a road that you're not meant to be on. You know, I I say this all the time, uh, you know, there's a book I love called the four agreements and, um, and it's a lot of talks about is what people say and do, uh, to you says more about their reality and how they see their life than it does you. Um, and so, you know, always remember that if you have somebody that's, that's, that's getting you down or, or even yourself, 
you know, like, and I've found this sometimes too, is when you start to doubt yourself, it's that, it's that other part of your, that, that sensitive part of your ego that's like, see, do we really want to like go through this again and like, and like risk it getting crushed or risk being disappointed? And that's when you start to doubt yourself. And it even, even though that's like, it's like your old self before you got into sports or, or anything athletic that was like, see, you can't do a triathlon. You can't run a marathon. You can't do this. And so you never did. Well, then finally you decided one day that, hell yeah, you could. <laughs> and so you did it. But you're always going to have those those people who try to bring you down and welcome you back into their their uh, room of, of laziness and failure. And you're also going to have those people, that you know, that person inside your head of the person you used to be um, that you're never going to get rid of, ever. Um, but you just have to know how to deal with them. Yeah, there's nothing humans want to do more than validate who they are or the decisions they make. And if they can validate it, you know, their quote-unquote laziness or whatever through your injury or your setbacks in triathlon or running or any of the new passions that you've decided to go after, that validates their decision to be to not do those sorts of things, even if they may think that that's the best thing to do. You know what I mean? It's like they're always... You know, that's a, it's a game we play with ourselves. It's sort of like uh, the best way to piss off your neighbor with a shitty yard is to get a sweet landscape. And thing going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's just like, yep. it's just like, man, they, it's something that I think everyone has inside or would like to be doing, but it makes it so much easier when you fail and they don't have to say, well, it's, I guess, see, it's not worth trying. Mm, or see, it can be done. I just convinced myself I couldn't. Yeah. Validation, man. We like to validate uh, all of our decisions, right, wrong, or yeah, otherwise. Validation by other people's failure. Yep. That's just, uh, yeah. I go on a whole no soapbox about that one, but we'll we'll uh, we'll skip. We'll save that for the the uh, the book. <clears throat> yeah, we'll save that for the the crushing iron book. Uh, how to buy goggles? Now, see, this is a, I think this is a good one, but you're kind of like maybe not so much. No, I I disagree. Oh, you. Uh, you think it is a good one? No, I mean I disagree that it's a not. It's not a bad one. I just buy the ones. <laughs> I've just that, had a lot of problems with this, man. <laughs> I know you have. Just buy the ones that fit your face. Like, yeah, but, like, I mean that's what like, I've been doing since I found them. But face, I've got about twenty extra just, pair in my bag because I, half of them leaked. His face is is. Um, how do you do that online? I guess you know. How do you even know in the store? Trust, trust the return process, man. I know. God, swim all that if you're listening. I've got a whole closet full of stuff that I should have returned that I didn't get in in time. Yeah, watch out. Hey, if we're coming to camp, watch out. Mike's going to be on the beach with like one of those trench coats. And before we get started, he's going to he's gonna flap it open. There's going to be like eight pair of Zogs on the left, a couple pair of Pokas <laughs> on the right. He's going to be selling goggles like Rolexes. So just be prepared. Bring cash on hand if you're interested. Um, and he'll give you a deal. Hey, listen, we've got, what, three slots open for the camp, or what do we got? <laughs> yeah, we got uh, three slots, yeah, man. We're at yeah. 17. Who's looking to come to Nashville in July and do some of the most awesome training sites around? I mean, A, Nashville, everybody wants to come here, or there, and B, there. we've got a sweet uh, camp all lined out with all kinds of stuff going on. So Yeah, we do. It's going to be great, and if for some reason I know it's short notice, you can't make it, you know, we... Uh, the first day of this camp, we're going to announce our three dates for next year. Uh, and then at some point, you know, over the next weeks, few weeks after this first camp, I know we'll have a, a pretty legit, awesome tribute video of the camp. Uh, thanks to yours truly, Mike Torelli. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to know more about the camp, if you just go to crushingiron.com, I think it's the first article on that page yep, right now sure is. all the times all the stuff we're going to be doing all the extracurricular activities and whatever all, all the funness yeah all the learning funness and fitness Even, uh, all right so uh you got any uh so goggles i, got, I guess you just buy them huh? whatever fits your face I, yeah man i got nothing for that I, i'm i'm that guy <laughs> i'm gonna buy it you know if you're looking for some like in-depth uh introspection on how to buy goggles, like how to not suck at buying goggles. I got nothing for that. <laughs> just try, try a few pair, return the rest. Done. <laughs> there Man, you go. Just gave me an idea for a one-page ebook. <laughs> Nineteen bucks. How to Text. buy? Go- how to not to yeah. suck at buying Text, goggles? Pictures, videos. Buy something um, that fits your face. <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah. Love the guys. <laughs> um, 
So can we move on? Yeah, man. Let's go on. All right, good. A few workout ideas for open water. Um, this is one of my. This is a good one. I posted an answer to this, but you know, a lot of people. Oh, well, I'm going in open water. You know, I just want to get comfortable in my wetsuit. You know, how should I do that? Well, if you want to get comfortable at going slow in your wetsuit in the open water, then just go slow, um, and you'll race like that. If you really want to get comfortable in your wetsuit and you want to race fast, then swim fast in your in your wetsuit in open water. And a few great ways to do open water workouts is if you if you have a designated course that you know the distance, obviously that's easy. You know, we where the the venue we'll be using has buoys. And we'll do things like buoy and backs, like sprint out, easy back, easy back, easy out, sprint back, or you know, alternate buoy to buoy. I want you know, uh, steady this buoy, all out to the next, easy to the next. Uh, little things like that are easy to break it up. If you don't have that and you're just swimming continuously in a in a body of water, like a lake or even an ocean, I like to I like to pick strokes. So warm up for you know whenever you feel ready to roll. And then you can do things like, you know, build your way up pyramid, you know, 25, you know, based on hundreds, 25 strokes all out, 75 strokes easy, 50 strokes all out, 50 strokes easy, 75 strokes all out, 25 easy, um, hundred strokes all out, hundred strokes easy, and then work your way back down. That's kind of like the swimmageddy. Swimmageddy, um, yeah. If you've ever done one of my, you know, infamous Monageddy workouts, um, and, you know, so th- that's a great way to break it up if you don't have kind of a distance or a marker that can help you with that. Strokes are a great way. Um, and it's a, and it's, it's a great way also to help you get in a rhythm. You know, a lot of people go out in open water and they just, like, literally, like, splish splash around. I mean, you'd be, you'd be better off, like, going on dry land down a slip and slide. Um, oh, because, like, pe- you seriously would. People just don't, like, they just get in the water <laughs> to say they went and got in open water. Like, we've seen people before, let's be honest. They used to come out to Anderson Road Beach, and they would do like, they would spend forty-five minutes in the water. Thirty minutes of it would be floating and talking, and then twenty minutes of like super easy like swim strokes. Tell me what the hell that got like you got out of that? Uh, you know, like you got nothing. You know, you, you might have got good, good, well, debatable on the conversation level, but like you just, it's it's. It, put some purpose behind it you know and and that's why people tend to struggle because they do these like open water um sessions or these group things and like they really like they they don't apply what's realistically going to happen when they have to face it and unless you do that in practice you won't be able to do it when it comes time to perform yeah i'm buying into that man i got nothing to add i mean that's exactly yeah if i could drop my headset i would (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, uh, strategies for a 90 degree run yeah other Man. than not doing it yes right yeah <laughs> treadmill or wake up earlier um no i think you know we've you know uh you know hydrate 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 and minimize your expectations on intensity um you know that's just something that you have to you have to take your time you know getting used to you know have low expectations in the heat um and, and just do that, you know, to wear protection, um, you know, whether it's, whether it's, uh, yeah, we're major explicit where it depends on know, what park you go to. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> I'm going to dig this. I know what you're talking about sunscreen. Uh, yeah. Well, we don't want to get into sunscreen topic. I've got, I'm going to oh, dig something uh, up. I'm, I've, I think I've proven my point. I found it the other day. I'm going to find it. I'm not going to talk about it right now, good. but there is, uh, there's some real stuff here. Yeah, all right. Sunscreen. Uh, uh, yeah, 90 bad, degree, bad, bad, bad yeah. news. Uh, 90 degree runs, you know, acclimate, try not to do it in the hottest part of the day, um, hydrate a ton, take extra fluids. You might not always need extra, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm running longer or I'm running in hotter conditions. I just need to take like two water bottles full of, you know, souped up endurance drink. You you don't you still don't need all the calories. You just need the extra hydration. That's what often that's what often leads to people getting this like really bad stomach cramps or gut issues when they run in hot weather is because they think they need always more calories when in fact they usually just need more hot water and hydration. Yeah. Um, I'll usually take like I'm going for an hour. I'll take like a, a small sports drink to sip, and then the other water bottle I'll take, and that's just to cool myself. Whether it's on the back of my neck or my face, uh, wash the the salt out of my eyes or something like that. So. 
Um, but always be careful um, and, and don't have any expectations. And I wouldn't recommend like trying to go blast out five one mile repeats on the black track at two p.m. You know when it's ninety. Um, now I know you're not a scientist, right? But and I hate to put you on the spot. I'm just curious. You know, say a normal, uh, you know, one hour run in ninety degree heat. Like how much height? How much fluid do we lose? I mean, it's oh, everybody's different. Okay, uh, no idea. But I know everybody's different. But it's uh, probably more than we think. You think that's fair? Oh, to say? I, I would say so. Yeah, I mean, I can usually wring out my shorts when I'm done with one. Yeah. Um, I, I would say at least two to th- two to four pounds. Yeah, and when you try to, I mean, yeah, uh, that's why I'm, I, I'm no scientist. Yeah, I mean, and that stuff comes. It's not like you just replace it because, like, as you're running, I mean, you have to really kind of st- stay strong to that after you get done, too, right? I mm, mean, you have to you have hydrate a ton for all for, night. Forget forget focusing on your, um, <clears throat> you know your your shake with two scoops of of max protein FS carbon. Um, and drink a crap ton of water, you know, and, and eat some food. Um, but you're going to have to do it till, you know, you'll find this a lot with people. So work out in the afternoon hard, they'll drink a ton of water and then they'll basically just like drink minimally and then go to bed and they'll wake up like super dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they have a cup of coffee and it gets worse. Yes, and, it does. you know, and so you always think about that. Take a huge, even if, you, even if it's, you know, at the risk of having to get up, you know, and take a leak in the middle of the night. It's worth it. Um, the clear pee is worth it. Yeah, that's the answer. The clear pee. The clear pee. Um, mechanical kit makeup. Man, nah, that's pretty easy. Uh, you know, at least a tube, a CO2, a tire lever, if not two tire levers, and if you need a patch kit, take a patch kit. That's really all you need. I don't. I don't. If I'm racing Olympic or shorter, I don't even carry one because I'm just gonna go in. I'm going blazes out, and if something bad happens, it bad happens. But um, seventy point three, I'll take. I'll take that exact kit, and then I will replicate that kit in an Ironman times two, and I will put my second one in my special needs bag. That way, and just for some, you know, reason, I've already gotten a flat the first fifty six miles, or you're in bumpy roads and you've lost your kit, you're going to want to pick it up again and shove it in your jersey just to make sure you have it. Mm. Yeah. Do you do you sometimes leave it there? Yeah. If I don't need it, I don't pick it up. Okay. Um, you, you don't get that back, man. You don't. You don't get it back. <laughs> Where does all that stuff go? I've always wondered. I mean, oh, man. The Iron Man Special Needs Graveyard. Yeah. Who gets that stuff? Kids? Like local kids or local triathlon the, groups? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Because there's got to uh, be tons of stuff. Oh, gosh, man. The stuff they probably find. What about those, those water packs. bottles? Oh, man. Uh, I think I think they actually corral those and, like, give those away or something. Um, or hopefully recycle them. Like, I mean, be good to Mother, you know, good old Mother Earth. Um, but who knows? Yeah. Well, That's a good question. If anybody out there knows what they do with all, like, the mass exodus of, like, crap, do they just throw it away or do they at least, like, donate it to a good cause, you know? Um, Ooh, you man. know, I heard it one time they were throwing away old like water. They got caught. They got. Did you hear about that? They got busted throwing yeah. away like water they didn't use why on the you, course. Oh yeah, I mean, why would you do? Yeah, anyway. well, it was just easier to dispose than it. Of to, course, it was easier. That's what you, people always go the easier route. Doesn't uh, make it right. I know. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying. Sorry, man. I'm a little fired up this afternoon. Evidently, man. This is maybe this is the time. Five o'clock in the <laughs> this afternoon. Is my, this, this is my wheelhouse. You're my starting to sleep in a little. I can see it. You're sleeping in. Dude, more. there was no. Dude, I was up at five fifteen. There ain't uh, no sleeping in today. Okay. Um, cold water shock prep. Next topic. Uh, you know, the more times you can swim in cold water, the better. You know, and that's just one of those things. It's kind of like heat prep. The more times you can run in the heat, the better. The more times you can swim in the cold water. Uh, it's better for you. And then um, getting in the water early and getting warmed up and getting your body uh, um, acclimated to it. And then also, obviously, I think I've discussed it before, is is just dumping a ton of like ice-cold water down the back of your neck um, right before you get in is a really good way to kind of wake up and shock your body before you actually shock the whole thing. Um, and that, that's a good way I found in the past when I've gotten in really cold water was to just dump cold water down my down the back of my neck, do it a few times to where I'm super cold, um, and get that initial shock out of the way, and then hop in. 
you know, like five or six seconds later. You know, don't wait because you're just going to warm up again and and then or dread it even more. So that's what I would do. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I did. We were actually doing that at Chattanooga. Not that the water was cold. It was a wetsuit race, and the water was like 72, but Mm -hmm. 71, 72. But the problem was because they shortened the race. um, We were supposed to start at seven or whatever it was, and the minute the pros got around the corner they started moving the course around so we didn't start until quarter after or whatever and i'm so glad that i had a bottle of cold water because it was we had our wetsuits on you know we were getting ready to move the line and then all of a sudden they started moving buoys so we were stuck in kind of no man's land as to when it was going to start so we ended up having our wetsuits on for like 20 minutes or something oh man and it was getting hot so it was really great to have water to kind of cool the body down that's actually a different topic but it was um another good reason to have a big bottle of cold water with you before a race. That's a good idea. Great idea, actually. Um, Man, you know, I think that's all I got for today. I I want this topic, this next one, to be our topic for next time, because I could go on a whole podcast about this one. I know. I really like it, too. I don't know where Um, it came from. Did um, I make that up? I think I made that up on one of my my inquisitive uh, rants. I don't know if you want to take credit for that. I think I saw it somewhere. <laughs> I don't um, know, man. It was a culmination I, of everyone, I think. And then, but you know, I I, I get it. Um, and, and the question is is uh, <clears throat> just to kind of leave it out there as a teaser for the next cast is um, when did Iron Man go from something incredible and so very difficult to do to something where people get mad and depressed about their times? And that is a whole different podcast. Okay. Uh, then we can tackle it next time. Man, we are so on the same page with that because I was yeah. really anxious to get that question, but there's no way to do it justice right now. No, there's no way. There's no way. And I think this this was a this is what I would call an espresso cast. We jam packed a lot of info into these 38 minutes. Yeah, this was a power cast, man. It was power cast, power cast, power meter. Wait, uh, no, we already uh, had that one. Yeah. Hey, Don't listen. I think, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you know, we have been having some huge listen days, download days, and everything like that, and we really appreciate it, and I'd like to thank everybody for that. And I also would like to thank, because I think what's happening is uh, more and more people are confident maybe sharing with, with other people, you know, that in their tri groups or, you know, uh, Facebook groups or whatever, but we've been getting a lot of positive response, so I, I think we've kind of cleared that hurdle as to you know whether or not you can feel confident sharing the podcast i mean we're getting uh, emails and and thank yous from all over the place and uh, there's a lot of good information in our archives and things like that too so um, feel free to share it and um, you know help us out get the word around because the momentum's there things are going really well and we appreciate it here 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 to that here here to that anything else you want to say man uh, nah, uh, I, I think uh, it worked last time, so uh, I guess I think we got some new some new likes and followers. So if you want to keep up with us off of the cast, then go over to Facebook and like our Crushing Iron Facebook page. As we mentioned before, if you want to be part of the conversation and get in cool things like the Facebook Live Q&As or just chit-chat about awesome stuff with some really awesome people, um, then please search and ask to join our Crushing Iron Close group. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Crushing Iron or Instagram at C26 underscore triathlon. Yeah. And, again, um, feel free to go drop a few bucks on Patreon if you want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying the one thing I wanted to point out is that we are putting extra content on there, too, for the patrons. And patrons, And if you, um, you know throw a few bucks that way you get some extra content and there's going to keep being more and several, yeah, I wanted several to ask of the you, podcasts I, have been released early there as well so and they're always going to be on monday and thursday What's how that? did my how did my article go over i think i saw where somebody commented on it but i couldn't read it yeah i'm about ready to check on that i've been so <clears> busy with this mike tarali.com video business of mine oh yeah 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 the money the last maker. couple days well, you know, yeah. Just, well, if you if you're not on if you're not on Patreon, you want to read the article. It's it's uh, what I call the four F rule, and it is uh, fatigue always trumps fitness when you fail to freshen up. Uh, so yeah, let me know how that went. I love the I love the feedback. Uh, 
That's all I got, man. If you have any questions for me, comments, concerns, training advice, or coaching opportunities, you can email me at c26coach at gmail.com. And anything else, crushingiron at gmail.com. And we are always normally here for you. Yeah, at least I am. You are. Somebody, one of us yep. will be here. One of us will be. Yeah. Coach. All right, man. Until next time. All right. It's been a pleasure. Talk to you later, dude. See you, man. Bye.